<clears throat> 2 a.m. That's a time that resonates with me a lot. The nights where I'd be in bed after gaming the whole day. Late at night, it's like 11 p.m. And then I'd scroll on my phone, social media. Keep scrolling, scrolling on YouTube, what binge watching Netflix or anime. And then I look at the time, I'm like, I'm feeling a little bit tired. And then I see, I see it's 2 a.m. I decide it's time to finally go to bed because I know I have to wake up at six in the morning after for college. That was something I did almost every day during college. And I have a feeling it's something that you might be relating to right now as well. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Instead of waking up super, super tired and having a shitty sleep, I wanna talk about how you can actually have a good sleep. First things first, how are you? I hope things were good and I hope you've been all right. So the first thing that I do that has helped me get from that 2 a.m. usual sleep schedule to going to bed at 10 p.m. and always waking up at 6 a.m. now, that is my sleep schedule. It has been like that for the past, past few months now. I don't know how long it's been, but I've consistently managed to do that. The first thing that I do that I make sure that I do is that I don't go to sleep with my phone. That was the biggest thing. If there's one thing you take from this video, it's that. I don't sleep with my phone because that was the biggest instrument to going to bed super late and having a really shit sleep. Having that distraction within an arm's reach. Not just when I go to bed, I'm scrolling on it and, and then sometimes I'll be watching something and then I don't even remember when I fell asleep. It's not just when you go to sleep. When I wake up, at least this was for me, when I woke up and if my phone was within an arm's reach, I'd grab it. And guess what? I'd do the exact same thing I did the night before when I was about to sleep. I'd scroll on my phone. I'd watch on my phone. Get rid of that so it's not an arm's reach. Suddenly, you won't do that. That's weird, right? It's weird how that works. I think the best thing to do is just sleep with your phone on the other side of the room. On like a wireless charging thing or something. On the opposite side of your room. Or even better, in another room. I have mine on the opposite side of my room. And I have to manually like do this sometimes. I have to actively think, all right, it's 10 p.m., time to put your phone away, time to go to sleep. So when you have to wake up in the morning, you have to walk over to your alarm. You can't just roll to the side to your phone within arm's reach, press snooze and then go back to bed. You actually have to get out of bed and walk to your phone to turn off the alarm. And that's the second thing. Well, not really my second thing. It's just a little extra, a little bonus, drink water. First thing, when you turn off that alarm, before you go back to bed, drink water. Put water right next to your phone and drink water. Your body's been asleep for eight, maybe less, maybe more hours. Your body's going to be really dehydrated. Chances are when you're tired, you're actually not tired. When you wake up, you're actually just really thirsty. My official second point, light in the evening. Your lighting in the evening slash afternoon is very, very important. When you wake up, it's very important to have a lot of overhead light, right? It's currently the morning. I have my top light on. I've got my windows open so I can let as much sunlight in as possible. It's very important when you first wake up, you have a lot of overhead light as if you're in uh, under the sun, you know? Turn on your bedroom light. Make sure there's a lot of light in your room. And the same goes when the opposite. When it starts to get to the afternoon, the evening, turn off those afternoon lights those harsh, bright lights. Instead, put on some candles. Much, much better, some candles that aren't above your head, kind of low down on shelves or on your table. Now, the reason I say this is because it will fix your circadian rhythm. This is known as your internal clock. When you wake up and if you have a lot of overhead lights on, your brain's gonna think that, oh my God, the sun's up. It's time for us to get up. And then when it gets to the afternoon, the evening, and there's no over light, overhead lights, no harsh lights, then we have candles on instead. It's almost like a sunset. Our brain will think, oh, it's like a sunset. We've got to go to bed. You'll start getting tired. This is the reason why harsh blue light on our phones is so, so detrimental to our sleep. Because it's such a harsh light, it makes our brain think that it's sunrise. It's time to get up. So by doing this, you'll actually be able to fix that internal clock and go to bed at a normal schedule instead of 2 a.m. Third point is don't eat past eight. 
the reason i think everyone's heard this like don't eat past eight it's not healthy for you but i don't think many people actually explain why so me i went into research i figured out why it's bad and why you shouldn't and it's because your body has a finite amount of energy a lot of that energy when it's sleeping is spent on recovery on focusing on burning calories recovery so that you're ready for the next day after however if you eat past 8 p.m you're about to go to bed you know 10 11 even later like even if midnight but if you eat around and like quite late your body won't spend time recovering it will spend that finite amount of energy digesting instead now if you don't do this and you actually let your body recover the benefits that come from it is that you'll lose a lot of weight a lot of weight loss is done through the night your body burns calories through the night when it's recovering and you'll have a lot more you'll have a much better physical health as well your health will be a lot better since your body has actually been able to recover and guess what since your body is not focusing so much on digesting and more on recovery you'll get to sleep faster and you'll sleep better and the last one it's probably the most unique and that is empty bowels there have been so many times where i've been late at night and i'm ah in bed i've done all the steps not sleeping with my phone listening to my favorite podcast or reading you know in bed comfy got my candles on you know, no lights comfy in bed fuck i need a piss <laughs> shit but I'm all comfy, so I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go downstairs. God, yeah. Empty your bowels right before you sleep. Force yourself if you need to. Let you go down to the bathroom and be like, piss, piss, piss. Like, just make sure that you are emptying your bowels before you fall asleep. The reason I say this is because you'll have a much more comfy sleep. You're emptying your system right before you go to sleep for a couple hours, and you won't have that thought on the back of your mind, oh, do I need to go take a piss? Oh, but I'm really comfy, I don't want to get up. And you also won't have that problem where you get up really late at night, like middle of the night, to go take a piss, go to the bathroom, or you wake up in the morning and you realize you really need to go. You will sleep way, way more comfier if you empty your bowels before you go to bed. I think this is one of the best things that I've done, just prioritizing my sleep. So I don't see that dredged 2 a.m. clock when I go to bed. And I actually go to bed and wake up good in a positive mood ready for the day this makes a huge change it made a huge change in my life satisfaction and it can make a huge change in yours i hope things have been good i hope things have been all right and i hope this video helped you out and i'd be really appreciative if you clicked on the one in the corner because this could help you out as well and subscribe if you want to see more content like this stay consistent and do the best you can you know what time it is yeah seven proven kiss Mwah.